And we're back for another episode. In this episode, we're going to be carrying on the 6.0 main story in Final Fantasy XIV. And as always, hello from Mifri. So we are here um, in Gala Mold at uh, 1329. And the next quest is called Outside Help. So we need to talk to Lucia. So Lucia is taking stock of the present situation. No major injuries then. Good. I briefed the recovered soldiers and sent them on their way as quickly as I could, but nevertheless feared they would not make it in time. The additional support was invaluable. Your men saved more than a few lives. Though not all, I regret to say. I take it that I am addressing Lucia Junius. I am the Forum's envoy, Forchano Leveilleur. And you are owed an explanation for these most dire developments. Another trial wrought by the final days. I was beginning to suspect as much. You doubtless feel some consternation having been forced to abandon your original plan. But trust me when I say you were right to send the refugees elsewhere. Beasts have been sighted within the capital. Perhaps it was a stroke of grim fortune that the population was decimated beforehand, as they've yet to appear in any great number, but in time. In any case, Maxima leads the remainder of the contingent in an effort to cull the creatures and evacuate the populace as we speak. Once the airships have taken to the skies, I pray your men can be persuaded to join him. You'll permit us to retain our weapons? I wouldn't have sent you after the Scions were I expecting you to stab them in the back. And I, for one, would not consider past transgressions more relevant than future contributions. Regardless of the circumstances that saw us at odds before, we need men of courage now, more than ever. We swore to defend Garlemald, and so we shall. It seems you have everything under control. You will excuse me then, for mine own duties await. A moment, Master Fortuno. You did desire to express your appreciation for services rendered, did you not? I did. Though if you intend to again ask that Charlian alter its course, you will find my gratitude insufficient. Tis nothing so onerous. I wish to hear the details of this grand endeavor of yours. Do you swear to listen and to learn? and not to embark upon some scheme to impede us. I swear. Hmm. Any other I would doubt, but you I trust to keep your word, for not once have you broken it. Very well. I will request that the Forum make you privy to our plans. You may await our summons at the Baldessian Annex, assuming the decision is in your favor. Does that suffice? It does. You have my thanks. 
Excellent. You can regale us with tales of your most recent sojourn to the first while we wait. <laughs> Did you hear something just now? Dawn may banish even the darkest night, and to this bitter clime bring warmth and comfort. Tis heartening to see such an assembly upon my return. I thought often of you whilst I looked down upon our star's brilliance from the moon above. Yes, but what are you doing here? And dressed like that? Aren't you cold? Verily. That's a girl in I shorts. For my health, should I proceed to expound upon our purpose, ere I procure more suitable garments. Then, allow me to summarize. We're here because none of you lot are up there. Nor has anyone deigned to send word about any changes in the plans. Rude is what it is. At least that's what I thought at first, but then folks got to wondering if you weren't in a spot of bother, so we decided to take matters into our own hands. Come down here and help, if our help be needed. So she says, but it's also something of a convenient excuse to visit a theorist. Oyanjay made it sound absolutely marvelous, more so before the impending doom, but still. And it's not like there will ever be a better time. What with the aforementioned doom? Marvellous, they say, yet not an ounce of pudding to be found. I must suffer Orionje's inferior works no more. Hey! Maybe consider the plight of present company before you go blathering on about pudding and doom? Should you require any assistance with whatever, we are at your disposal. We were born from Heidelin's love for the lives of this star, so naturally we would much prefer to see them continue. Twiddling our thumbs up on the moon is hardly conducive to that, though, is it? Aye, not when you've all got such precious thoughts and feelings and hopes for the future deserving of more active preservation. Speaking to Oriange made us realize that while we've carried out our duties to the letter, we failed to fulfill them in spirit. From there, it was just a hop, skip, and a jump towards resolving to do better. So please, show us how. Help us help you. Forgive me, but are they... Thy distant collaborators, indeed. Hey, old fellow, well met. You'd be a member of the forum, would you? It's an honor and a pleasure to meet you at last. I'm Livingway, Hydlin's right paw. That last bit is very important. As am I, if I may humbly say so myself. <laughs> I uh, bid you welcome to our star, Livingway. On behalf of the Forum, I thank you for traveling such a distance to meet us. 
As you have surmised, preparations for the Exodus have not proceeded as smoothly as we had hoped. I should be happy to personally escort you to our headquarters in Charlian, where you may advise us as you deem fit. Twas with reluctance that I set aside the great work of readying the moon for habitation. Be assured that I did so only after the Loperates made plain their earnest desire to come hither, and I myself felt a growing certainty that their contributions here would prove invaluable. Tis trite, perhaps, but I followed my heart. Uh, good to have a you back. May thy disciples banish the darkest of nights. <laughs> For a time, at least. Nevertheless, twas worth the journey to find present company well. <laughs> Will thou attend us at the forum and lend thine own wisdom? If that's all quite settled, can we start moving before Urianger catches his death? Even I'm freezing out here. Well, at least she said it. Oh, I dare say you'll warm up quickly once you're aboard the airship. Sat shoulder to shoulder with our fur covered friends. Okay. All right, let's talk to Yuri Anje. So I dare say Master Fortulot was not as non. Uh, plus, as we learn the identity of Hydaelyn's lunar custodians. Um, as he will soon discover, they have much and more to offer the forum. Might I suggest that we return to the Annex forthwith? Uh, we may yet have time to discuss our recent adventures. Here we are summoned to the Rostra. Interesting. Alright, so let's go to the main hall into the Annex. Not that I'm complaining, Yuri Anje, but I wasn't expecting to see you quite so soon. Nor I thee. Um, in extolliating the virtues of Ephorus, I did inadvertently awaken the Loreprits a desire to avert our beloved star's demise. Quiet tells us you have obtained new knowledge that may aid us in our ongoing efforts. I have news to share regarding our study of the Ethereal Sea, but your findings are certain to be of greater interest, and so I would rather hear them first. To what revelation did Hydaelyn's um, Elpis flower lead? And this dynamis is what drives the final days. Um, if it and Akasa are one and the same, this all but proves Nidhana's theory. Uh, were an entity through sheer force of emotion to channel this vast dormant reservoir into a raging river, its power might surpass even that of Aether. But if our star is so uh, replete with Aether, said entity would need to be outside its influence to effectively manipulate the dynamis of the Great Expanse. Uh, Metion, or rather the sorrow and suffering of fallen civilizations that she has been hoarding for millennia. Untold anguish and fear and hatred drawn from every corner of the universe, all for a single purpose, the destruction of Ephorus. And our foe is no longer some unknowable calamity. We have but one aim, to defeat Metoyan. 
You make it sound so simple, but you're not wrong. Thank Rich Matoyan and we deliver the world from the final days. But to even attempt it, there are two conditions. First, we must determine her location. Uh, before Mitoyan escaped, an enchantment was placed upon her by Vena, the woman who had become Hydaelyn. The implications of temporal magics are not entirely understood, and so we cannot assume that our, that our Hydaelyn and the Vena we you met in Elpis are one and the same. Nevertheless, due to her intrinsic qualities as an all-powerful being, I'd wager that Hydaelyn possesses the knowledge we seek. Whether she would share the knowledge with us, however, remains to be seen. After all, she intends for us to flee Ephorus, uh, not to stay. Do you suppose that she has abandoned her pursuit of Metoyan? The Vanat I know would never give up. No, but Metoyan is still out there. I fought not for the lack of trying on Hydaelyn's part. Surely that's why she used me as a conduit for her will, and provided clues such as the Elpis flower. I believe that she has been waiting. For mankind's answer to Hermes' question. So what's the second condition? We must find a means to reach Metoyan. Naturally, our chosen method will depend entirely upon wheresoever she has made her nest. Then, communing with Hydaelyn must be a necessity come first. Uh, did you and Master Matoya have any luck with your investigation into the Ethereal Sea? Sadly, not. Though we enlisted the help of Arinvald and other Echo blessed allies, we couldn't detect so much as a whisper from Hydaelyn, even from within the Anti Tower. Master Matoya is of the opinion that in the years since abandoning it, the Forum has found other uh, method of receiving instructions from Hydaelyn. If so, it would most likely be some form of apparatus for observing the Ethereal Sea, built closer to home. Sorry to interrupt, we've just received word from the forum. Your presence is required in the Rostra, where they intend to discuss the Great Exodus. And Father was able to persuade them. They're finally taking us seriously. Let's hear what they have to say. Cool. All right, let's go to the Rostra. Okay, so we got to the Rostra. Let's talk to the steward. The forum is in session, and as such, the Rostra is closed to visitors. A sign on the seventh dawn. Very well. You may wait in the corridor. Of course, entry will only be permitted in the condition that you leave your armaments at the door. Lest you forget, this sacred institu institution holds rational discourses in the highest. The implements of war are expressly forbidden. Fair enough. Okay, so let's go in. Alrighty. Oh jeez. I was expecting this place to be full. I guess not. Alright. Shortcut. <laughs> okay, here we go.
There is a matter I wish to raise with you before we enter. We are here to listen and to learn. But if the Forum's plans are more or less what I expect, then I should like to make a proposal that will serve our ends. By your leave, of course. I don't see why not. Your words and wits have gotten us this far. Agreed. I will present our queries so that you may consider the most advantageous way to advance your proposal without distraction. Thank you, everyone. If I may have your attention, the ad hoc session will now commence. The purpose of today's assembly is to brief the Scions of the Seventh Dawn at their request on the Great Exodus. You may enter. On behalf of the Forum, I commend your heroic actions on the Magna Glacius. We shall not soon forget your service to us and the people of Radzadhan. The Satrap, whom we have informed of the refugees' new arrangements, sings your praises as well. As an expression of our gratitude, we will endeavor to answer your questions as fully and openly as we are able. Then let us begin. First, it is the Forum's objective to ferry the life and knowledge of this star to the Moon. Am I correct? You are. It is for this purpose that Charlian has labored these many long years. We have collected biological samples and scientific records from across the star. When the time comes, they will be moved from their places in Labyrinthos and Numenon and conveyed to safety. Once that critical task has been accomplished, we will begin transporting the Charlian citizenry, which has been categorized into groups. The earliest arrivals are to ensure hospitable environs for those who come after. Following our people, we will send those of other nations in turn, beginning with our allies. Radzat Han was foremost among these. But since the final days have already come to Thavnir, we saw fit to include the refugees with earlier groupings. An ambitious plan. You have accounted for the safety of all nations and tribes, then? As many as we can. And how, pray tell, do you decide who to leave behind? To journey beyond the sky is an unprecedented and immeasurably difficult endeavor. Introducing sources of inevitable conflict would condemn all to certain death. Questions as to the validity of that approach aside, are your plans proceeding apace? We're under the impression that your primary means of celestial transportation is incomplete. If only in that it does not meet our optimal parameters, that is correct. This arc, as some have taken to calling it, is fully operational and could be launched even today. However, the final days have progressed more quickly than we anticipated. At present, the ship is incapable of attaining speeds sufficient to meet our evacuation targets. Should we put the vessel into service as it is now, we will be unable to travel to the moon and back quickly enough to complete the necessary number of trips. Precious lives and knowledge will be lost. 
Is there anything to be done? The ether burner, the primary means of propulsion once the craft is in the space between stars, is undergoing testing to determine whether it can be made more efficient. Though cargo is being loaded for the initial phase of the exodus, we are prepared to continue our experimentation up to the day before launch, should it prove necessary. What if the Scions were to solve your problem? We shall help devise a means to improve the ether burner's efficiency on two conditions. If we succeed, you must allow us to meet with Hydaelyn. Twas simple enough to deduce. You have a Concord, and so you would never have abandoned the Anti Tower had you no other means of communication. One far more convenient, I suspect. The second condition, also to be met upon our success, is that we be permitted to propose another use for your Ark. We would be at liberty to refuse this proposal. Of course. If we cannot prove its merit to the 99 here, who are we to stake on it the lives of all peoples of this star? <laughs> Delightful as always, Master Alfina. <laughs> We couldn't have asked for a finer plan. Allow us to solve this complex engineering problem of which we were entirely unaware until moments ago. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> the satire writes itself. <laughs> Yet, what field has not benefited from a change in perspective? When we are at wit's end, what we need is not the same dry theories recited ad nauseam, but fresh inspiration. I, for one, have faith in my erstwhile students to provide it, and I find their terms to be perfectly acceptable. Order! Order! We have no time to waste on debate. I call a vote. All in favor of agreeing to the Scion's terms? Seventy-one in favor, twenty-eight against. The ayes have it. Fortuneau, as the architect of this project, you are the best candidate to show them its current state. And bear in mind that regardless of your personal misgivings, this is the will of the Forum. Very well. Call this session to a close. Return to your tasks with urgency. The final days wait for none. Interesting, interesting. Okay, let's talk to Alphanode. So, sorry about not letting the rest of you know on my plan. I was admitting, admittedly thinking on my feet for the most part. Yeah, I mean, they didn't know that this plan existed until he came out with it. But since we require both a means of communing with Hydaelyn and reaching Metoyan, in the spur of the moment I saw involving ourselves with the completion of the Ark as a way to work towards both objectives simultaneously. 
However, we must first keep our end of the bargain by solving the problem of the Aether Burner. I'd like to think it is not a challenge beyond our combined expertise, or at least the expertise of our extended circle of associates. Um, it might behoove us to learn how an Aether Burner actually works before we attempt to improve it though. Yeah, makes sense. Let's talk to Fortunal. The next quest is called Going Underground. Fortunal's ability to maintain a stiff upper lip is being sorely tested. As instructed, I shall take you to see the Aether Burner. Meet me outside the Archeon. I trust you can make your own way there. So the Ark is being built in Labyrinthos. Hardly surprising. Where else could they conceal such a massive undertaking? All right, let's go. Okay, so we caught up with the gang in Labyrinthos. So let's talk to Fortional. So our destination lies in the lower levels. The forum in its wisdom has granted you access to the Archeon's lift. Step inside and have um, Ophelin take you to the medial circuit. Oh, well, we can finally access the other part of Labyrinthos. So, let's go. Okay, so we went down the lift. Talk to him. So, I have sent your associates ahead to uh, Logiscon Alpha on the other side of Marial um, Argonomics. Actually, there is something I've been meaning to... Oh, never mind. It can wait. Let's attend to the matter at hand. Okay, so let's catch up with the gang. Uh, let's go. Okay, I caught up with Alpha Node and the gang. So we are to wait here while our father arranges for us to use the next lift. Um, here being Logisticon Alpha, where the atmospheric conditions of Labyrinthos are regulated. Water is drawn from underground and dispersed as vapors, simulating the formation of artificial clouds and rain. By implementing the temperature and air circulation, they are able to create the ideal environment for growth and preservation of the biological samples kept here. Hold on, how do you know so much about it? My father brought me here as a child. What? And left me behind? Actually, you're the one who left me behind when you went off somewhere with grandfather. The night before, I'd been asking father how clouds are made, so he decided to show me. It was fascinating. I peppered him with questions the entire time. It's all too easy to take for granted the many interweaving aspects of the natural world, to grow inured to the wondrous. But having gained an understanding of the complex mechanisms employed by the uh, Loberis in recreating a similar environment, I have come to view such processes in a new light. The subterrain uh, gardens of Labyrintho, Saluna Prison Forge, to contain the ancient zodiac, the um, habitations built for all mankind uh, neath the moon's surface, each unique, yet undeniably simil similar. Sorry, There's no more coincidence. Ever since Hydaelyn unfolded to us the grim fate that weighs Ephraim, every essential resource we could spare has been delivered to Labyrinthos, in preparation of the Great Exodus. But that is not all. It is also a testing ground for technologies that allow us to settle to distant stars. Uh, though the Loperites have endeavoured to make the moon inhabitable, uh, that is not our final destination. 
Mankind must learn to propagate life where there is none, to thrive where all is barren. Alas, time is not on our side. I have arranged for you all to enter the central circuit. It is there that most of our preparations for the Great Exodus are carried out, the, the construction of the Ark among them. Though our plans have been made public, access remains highly restricted. You, however, will not be subject to said restrictions, and will have free reign to come and go as you please. Such was the will of the Forum, after all. We will prove ourselves worthy of their trust, your trust. Then let us proceed. Okay. Let's talk to the lift operator. By decree of the forum, the signs of Seven Dawn are permitted to enter the central circuit. Right, let's go. Okay, let's talk to him. Wow, well, this place looks interesting. The Aether Burner is being constructed not far from here. Overseeing the work is Kokol Dankol, after whom the forge is named. Once the necessary introductions have been made, I shall leave you with him to discuss the particulars. This way. Alright, I'm going to assume it's far away. So, let's catch up with them. Okay, we caught up with them, so let's talk to Coco. I could swap them out. No, been there, done that. Damn near lost me eyebrows. Think, Coco, think! We'd be well on our way to paradise. Visionaries patting themselves on the backs for their grand accomplishments if you'd only think! Yes, that does sound rather lovely. Yeah! I mean, Master Fortune, you know, what a pleasant surprise. <gasps> We're not blasting off already, are we? The schedule remains unchanged, for better or worse. Which is why the Forum has elected to accept assistance in resolving the ether burner conundrum. Huh. Not seen you lot down here before. There are Archons among their number, but engineering is not their expertise. Nevertheless, the Forum concedes the slim possibility that they may have insights to offer. If not, you are at liberty to return them to the surface. By whatever means you see fit. I assure you that won't be necessary. Now, about your troubles with the Etherburner. Aye, aye. I'll walk you through it. Suppose I could do with a change of pace. As the name ought to tell you, the ether burner burns ether, ambient or otherwise, and transforms it into motive force. Think of it like a giant bomb that never stops exploding. Even out in that black void where the ether's right sparse, it's strong enough to move our arc. <laughs> and it probably won't kill you like an actual bomb. <sighs> But it ain't perfect. According to my calculations, to travel to the moon and back fast enough for the forum's liking, the conversion rate needs to be 6% more efficient. It's not too bad. A measly 6%, you say? But if I could have squeezed even another 0.6 out of it, don't you think I'd have built it that way in the first place? I guess. Hast thou consulted with the Loperids? Yes, they too are conducting their own research, for lack of a ready answer. The moon's propulsion systems are considerable, naturally, yet they are commensurately massive. It is no easy feat to convert their technology into an efficient means of propulsion for a teeny tiny toy boat, as they say, and as I most certainly do not. Yes, exactly! 
damn it all, I asked for a find out of Antite and they send me uppity rabbits with inscrutable, ancient, incompatible technology. You're trying to drive me mad. Yeah, maybe that's what they need to do, is just make it the arc massive, so it has less distance to travel. Do you speak of Allegan refined adamantite, perchance? You know of it? Only in the most general terms, I'm afraid. T'was an alloy of Allegan make, but the secrets of its production were closely guarded. As I recall, the record stated it was vital to Dalamud's construction and launch. Oi, that's the stuff. No material more conductive far as I know. Slotting some ends like blowing up a dam and watching the river of Aoife come rushing through. I ain't a living soul that knows how to make it, though. We were fortunate enough to salvage some for the Aoife burner just a wee bit, mind from a chunk of Dalamud that came hurtling into the northern empty during the calamity. With more? Well, that extra 6% efficiency will be child's play. It's a crying shame that we've no other sources. Surely the many shards of Dalamud scattered throughout Eorzea would suffice. Why not get the refined adamantite from them? Oh, <laughs> we tried, believe you me. But only a few specialized pieces would have had any in them to begin with. Drive calls from Ragnarok class internment hulks. Those are the prize bits we really need. But according to the gleaners, getting to them means delving deep into the shards. And the defenses are still very operational and very eager to blow them up. It's rough going in there, even for the cream. Not sure they'd make it out alive. Weren't we near that part of the Ragnarok when we went to destroy Bahamut? Uh, you want me to go and fetch the what's it? The White Raven's ghost that haunts me. This sounds like a job for someone else. <laughs> That may be for the best, though you doubtless find the task too dull for your liking. Hmm. There are multiple internment hulks in Eorzea alone, so handling this ourselves may not be the most efficient option. Rather, if we could salvage adamantite from the shards simultaneously... Thancred, is the link shell we established before you went to Garlemald still active? Of course. The floor is yours. What's all this? Gathering firewood, so to speak. We alone can accomplish little, but joined by others, we may yet build a bonfire to carry us heaven's ward. This is Alphano. The Scions have need of you. You do all the work for us, and we take credit. Love you, Understood. from Alphanot. I will contact the Lord Commander and dispatch our finest at once. My sisters are somewhat preoccupied with the final days, so I will lead the Twelveswood expedition myself. Are you aware of any other sources of refined adamantite? Logically, such an invaluable alloy would have been utilized solely where absolutely necessary, in components intended to conduct or collect surpassing amounts of ether. Any extant instrumentation or devices would have likely found their way into the hands of etherologists or enthusiasts. Magical artifacts of Allegan design? The Eastern Alliance will send word to one and all. Are there other ways we may offer aid? No shards of the lesser moon scar our soil, but our stake in this cause is no less for it. Is there anything in Othard that might be of use to you? Othard, you say? Oh, you got friends in far places, lad. Any road, 
If you're offering, I wouldn't say no to one of those Far Eastern sacred relics. Some of them can hold enough ether to summon a whole damn primal. Combine a sauce like that with the ether burner, and three, two, one, kaboom! I gather you heard his explosive enthusiasm. Might you secure us a suitable relic? It shall be done. I know little of machines, but I promise we will do our utmost to gather the materials you need to finish your starship. I am glad for the work, in truth. Better to busy oneself than wait and fret over disasters foretold. Then why are we all still standing about yapping this plunder for the taking? And I'm a born plunderer. I'll be an old Charlian before you know it. Start mixing the grog! I'm certain that can be arranged. Thank you all, and do be careful. Just like that. Aye, just like that. Our refined adamantite is on its way. Now let us consider our next steps, shall we? There's yet much to be done. Let's talk to the cryo. So it's times like these that we're reminded of how famous or infamous Alpha Node has become. Who'd have thought that he could achieve so much with a single link pole conversation? As we're expecting rather a lot of visitors in the near future, I'd best return to the surface and inform the relevant parties. I also have a contact of my own that might be worth a try. Oh, and who might that be? The Tataru. That's for me to know and you to find out. And on that note, I leave matters here in your capable hands. Best of luck. Alrighty. Meanwhile, in Ulda, dot dot dot. is clear. We must harvest refined adamantite from the shards of Dalamud and procure arcane relics of Allegan Make. Summon the best and brightest of our immortal flames and form an expeditionary party at once. Call upon the Salt and Sworn and Brass Blades for support as you must. Papashan, send word to the guilds. We will require the expertise of master artisans if we are to have any hope of identifying and recovering these elusive materials. Fear guys, we have need of your stone torches. They are to assist the immortal flames in scouring the ruins and to help secure the surrounding areas. I trust I can count on your support. As commander of the stone torches, my son, Zimberk, will personally see it done. Pippin, I would have you lead the raiding party. Assemble your finest, and with Tizona's blade, clear the way. Lord Lollarito, I pray you take charge of the search for Allegan relics. Surely you know of some being traded on open or clandestine markets. Or sleeping in collector's vaults. Of course, I ask not that you do this out of the kindness of your heart. By all means, profit on the transactions. I wish you the joy of it. The final days descend upon our world. If circumstances are truly as dire as they say, Uldar's best efforts may be for naught. And yet, when we Eorzeans rose from the ashes to rebuild our broken realm, did we not learn one simple truth?
that which seems all but impossible to overcome alone may yet be possible if we stand together. It was the Scions who united us then, and it is the Scions who call upon us now. Uldar will answer that call. We will summon our courage and join the fight for our world's future. You know your duties. I, Nanamo Ulnamo, 17th in the line of all, bid you good luck and good speed. Oh, yes, sir. Meanwhile, in the Black Shroud. We fielded a goodly number, but our ranks are heavy with healers, and an abundance of restorative magics will be of little help in destroying Dalamud's defenses. Still, it has ever been thus with Gridania. We must steel ourselves for a protracted engagement. In that case, might I suggest taking us along? Commander Hext, what are you doing here? None of the shards in Girabania are big enough to hold an internment hulk. So we said to ourselves, why not lend our neighbors a hand? We thought you might be short on people with a talent for breaking things. While it pains me to admit it, you are right. Our artificiency is so plain to see. It might have been a lifetime ago, but I was once one of the Scions assigned to the Shroud. I know this forest well. I know your people. And I know we will be stronger if we fight this fight together. Then I will impose upon you with a clear conscience. Come. Let us speak of how to integrate our forces. I won't let it all be for nothing. I promise you, Papalimo. Oh, at least she mentioned his name. Two expansions later. And meanwhile, in Corphus. There! There you are! We've no time to waste, brother. Everyone has already... Ah. A roar, a dragon's roar. Meanwhile, in the Ruby Sea.
And so, in summation, the Eastern Alliance, as well as the Honorable Lord Lollarito himself, reached out to me for assistance in procuring these treasures of the divine, and I, in turn, do beseech the Confederacy for aid. Hmm? Is that... Hancock? What a surprise this is. And a fortuitous one at that. I have a favor to ask, you see. Okay. Let's talk to Alphanode. So the next quest is called No Job Too Small, but I'm worried that the episode will become quite long, so let's do it next episode. So anyway, guys, that's it for this episode. Thank you very much, as always, for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.